This is Next Radio. With Broadcast Bionics. Innovative solutions for creative people. Thank you very much. I'm, uh, I have to say I'm pooing myself, so do bear with me. Uh, there's a lot of words... Uh, there's a lot of words on these slides. I'm going to try and sort of talk about different things to what's on the slides, so you're going to have to sort of uh, multitask a little bit. Uh, Project Banana is what we're talking about. Um, Project Banana purely because uh, everything at Absolute Radio that is a project is named after fruit. I don't know when that started, but banana kind of made sense because it was, uh, well, it's banana split. Um, either the TV show or the thing you get in Wimpy's, but... Uh, that's what it was named after. So that's the agenda. These are the things I'm going to talk through. Um, Absolute Radio had some unique requirements, which I don't think were replicated anywhere else in radio. Uh, I'd certainly never seen it uh, when I arrived, which is that there's seven radio stations, seven brand extensions, but they all ran the same breakfast show. And that's because we talked to the listeners and we said, well, what's more important? Is it a fun, lively, engaging, relevant live breakfast show? Um, you know, can you, would, you, would you forego that in return for playing the music from the decades uh, that you've tuned in for? And actually, the response we got was that the listeners preferred to, uh, to hear a fun breakfast show at that time of morning. Um, and with the best will in the world, we didn't have the time, effort or money to invest in you know, seven live breakfast shows. And anyway, Christian's great. People love him. The clients love him. So uh, we wanted to stick with that. So it was a little bit of a weird thing to have seven radio stations playing seven different sets of music except at breakfast time. The other thing we do at Absolute Radio is, is maximize our content wherever we can. We try and make sure that you know, every listener gets an opportunity to hear some of the great stuff we do, Frank and Jeff as well as uh, Christian, um, all of whom are very funny, very talented people, uh, and that's you know, our investment in the content. Uh, we want to get the most out of it, so we run it on seven radio stations. We also do podcasts as well. So the specification was for Project Banana was to solve this problem of the breakfast show. Not that it was a problem, but it was something that we'd like to crack, which was to maintain a live breakfast show, interactive, um, with the main radio station, Absolute Radio listeners, not noticing the difference, and listeners to the digital stations, I'll pick on Absolute 80s, uh, get the songs they love, as well as the live breakfast show. That was the plan. Uh, this was the concept we came up with, which is to take all our seven radio stations, take a live link that runs across all of them, play a different record on each radio station, then do another live link, then play an ad break, uh, and then again into seven different songs. Um, now, you'll see from this, actually, we, we already had the technology in place because we were already playing seven different ad breaks. In fact, actually, we're playing nine different ad breaks because we've got FM and AM uh, separate adverts as well. Um, so this was the main concept. The other, the other quick thing we'd noted, having dug into our record library, was that the songs on um, Absolute Radio 60s were considerably shorter than all of the other songs on the main radio stations. So the idea there was to you know, play two songs in the space of one song, so you actually get more records in the morning if you're listening to Absolute Radio uh, 60s. Uh, and the other idea, and this is something we haven't quite cracked yet, but we're still working on it, is to actually schedule by blocks of time. So if we're doing a segue after 9 o'clock and we would play three, three records out of the news on the main station, uh, we can actually take the total duration and fill it with songs up to, the, uh, up to that duration rather than having to, you know, play three songs all of the same duration in that block. Uh, that's the plan. We haven't quite cracked it yet, but we're still working on it. So to implement Project Banana, um, we needed to move to using G Selector um, because that get, gave us many, many more options, which is the newest version of the Selector music scheduling software from RCS. Um, we're already using Genesis, which enabled us to split seven ways, as I said. And um, we had to write a few new functions for the Genesis software to actually take us in and out of network at odd places that we weren't used to doing. Sort of, normally, it would be a top of hour junction or something like that. Um, so these are the these are sort of all the ta I won't go into this in detail, but these are the tasks we had to go through. The biggest one of all that lot was actually getting the song length in G Selector uh, and Genesis to be the same, because over the years we'd added songs into the database. Someone had listened, timed it, put it in, put a different intro time, 
and then that data hadn't necessarily been synced up between the two. So actually we found there were massive discrepancies between the songs we were actually playing and the timings that were listed in Selector. So we had to go through and sort all of that out. The other thing we had to do was normalize all our volume levels. Because again, over the years, different songs have been recorded in at different levels. Um, and it was important to get them all the same because Christian was going to be talking over seven different songs at the same time. Um, we had to make sure that they were quiet enough. The other big job was the workflow and actually getting the uh, music team uh, working through it. Again, um, a, bit, a bit push for time, so I'm not going to go into this in great detail, but this is the workflow that they, that they go through. They run uh, a special piece of software, which I'll come on to briefly, which is called Song Balancer. Uh, and this takes the rules from the breakfast music clocks and looks at them first and says, what are the songs that we actually want to play? What is their mood? What is their tempo? You know, the kind of thing you would normally do in a breakfast show. Takes those rules first, and then looks through all the songs to try and work out which ones it can find that are the right duration. And we actually give it a window of plus 10 or 15 seconds. So the song on a digital station can actually be longer than the one on the main station, but Christian will talk over the end of it. Or he can, if, they're, you know, if he's ducking out of a song early, which is entirely possible, he'll press a button that will just fade the whole lot. Um, so that's the process we go through. Operationally, we go into network at 6 o'clock. Um, and effectively, each song is now in an ad break. And that's how the presenter sees it. In the same way that they would see ad breaks before, the ad machines are playing out seven different songs simultaneously. Uh, and Christian has the option to drop songs or move them around if he, want, if he really wants to. Um, there are a few things we didn't want to do. We didn't want to con the listeners. We didn't want to pretend this wasn't happening. We wanted to be quite open about it. Um, we had no intention of extending it to other parts of the radio station. This is purely something we're doing for the breakfast show. And um, we didn't want to have to pre-record content or do different links on different radio stations. We wanted to be completely open about what we were doing. Here's an example link from Christian a couple of weeks ago. Um, a uh, prize for the person who notices what the one technical problem we didn't manage to solve. So this is a link from Absolute 80s uh, a couple of weeks ago. Good morning, it's 10 minutes past seven. It's the Christian O'Connell Breakfast Show on Absolute Radio on the main station. Uh, you just heard Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses. Uh, obviously, we are now broadcasting across a thousand different radio stations. Uh, so, for example, uh, whilst we were listening to Guns N' Roses on the main station on Absolute Radio 80s, uh, after uh, the news and sport, you would have heard Michael Jackson. Uh, next on 80s, mm -hmm. while we listen to the new one from Kaiser Chiefs, mm -hmm. I'm your man, Wham. Brilliant. Later on this hour on Absolute Radio 80s, Whitney Houston, how will I know? Mm -hmm. Pop Music M, and one of your favourites, Teardrops, Womack and Womack. So before we go any further, wow, second play for this this morning on the show. Let me know on 8, 12, 15. You can also give us a call, 0330 123 12, 15. If you're listening on Absolute 80s, enjoy Wham, I'm your man. So Christian knew he had enough of an intro to talk over on all the radio stations, so he could, he could actually talk over the intro to the song. The technical problem I was alluding to, which we have actually solved this week, is that Christian has his headphones so loud, you can actually hear what's playing on the main station on all the other radio stations. Um, and that, that it was a difficult nut to crack, believe it or not, because, you know, he's obviously deaf. So... Um, I realise I've absolutely cantered through this, and that there's a, you know there's a lot of information there to take in. Quite happy to talk to anybody about it at any time. Please do drop me an email or find me on social media or whatever. I'm happy to talk it through. Um, James asked me to put these in because there's obviously been a lot of work going on at Number One Golden Square, and he thought it would be nice just to show some pictures of, of how it's looking now. Everyone's moved in. Um, the reception area and. The zoo area, which we stopped calling the zoo, which was sort of where we had live events, uh, we started calling it the staff camp canteen. Um, but the zoo name has stuck from the years and years that it's been operational, so we're back to the zoo. Uh, Bauer have now employed someone whose job title, I kid you not, is zookeeper, <laughs> uh, who is responsible for the building. Um, so these are the KISS studios. Uh, obviously, being an underground radio station, they're in the basement. And... Um, they're looking pretty good. Uh, I think the whole building has a nice buzz to it. Um, this is the control panel for their video stuff that they do on the breakfast show in the morning. Um, up on the second floor, we have Magic and all of the production studios. There's actually about 10 production studios all in a line on the second floor. And um, the Absolute Radio Studio is 
exactly the same as it's always been. <laughs> it's still the same old woodwork, same old kit, everything as it was. We do have a new thing which is very exciting. This, this is the gallery which we can now control our sports shows from and everything, sort of separate from the studio, so we can actually control the output of the radio station from the... Oh, look, there's Russ Williams. I didn't notice him in that picture. Um, so we can control all that from there, and then Planet Rocker up with us as well on the third floor, um, using a weird hybrid of uh, systems. So they're using Dalek for playout, but still using our broadcast desks. And in case you were worried, the spirit of Virgin Stroke Absolute Radio lives on with guitars all over the place. Um, so that's my uh, email address. If there's anything you want to know about Project Banana, happy to talk about it um, to anybody. Thank you very much. This is Next Radio. With broadcast by Onyx, innovative solutions for creative people.